Oops, some doctor got into the shot. Okay, we're just going to get that out of here. So today we have a fantastically interesting topic to go over, and that is the topic of keyboard staggering. Well, I find it interesting at the very least. And what we're going to be talking about is the basics of the three most common different types of staggering you tend to see out there in the wild. It's going to be a fairly introductory video, not really going too deep into the ins and outs, but hopefully we'll shine some light if you're new to the keyboard hobby or looking to expand your knowledge base to bring you a little bit more up to speed on these configurations. Now, of course, we have the horizontal staggering, normal staggering, standard staggering, what everybody's used to, everybody's used their entire life. So we're going to move on to the more fun ortholinear staggering, kind of stepping out of that comfort zone a little bit. And then we're going to go right off the deep end and we're going to take a look at the column staggering or the more appropriate term, columnar staggering. However, I'm going to be mainly referring to it as a column stagger or a vertical stagger for most of this video because same columnare staggering is a little tricky to say over and over again and and I don't want to tie my hands for later in the video. Plus I'm lazy, very lazy. Oh boy, we're, we're zoomed out quite a bit, quite a bit. That's a lot of desk you can see. Okay, that, that's a little unnerving, a little unnerving. Uh, we'll, we'll make do, we'll make do. Now, what we have here is what most people are most familiar with, and that is the horizontal stagger. There is normally a one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a half offset along the rows on a normal stagger layout. This is being measured by one U or one unit keycaps, which is the measurement we use when talking about the position of the keys and the size of the keycaps. For anyone who hasn't gone down that deep, deep, dark rabbit hole that is mechanical keyboards, I'm sorry for dragging you a little bit deeper. Knowledge comes at a cost, and it is a steep one, unfortunately. Mostly at the expense of your social life. Now, there are different types of horizontal staggerings for keyboards, like the equal stagger, where the keys are staggered in equal amount, usually one quarter of a keycap. And then there is the symmetrical staggering, where the same offsets are maintained from a normal stagger, but are mirrored. So it, the keyboard's kind of cut in half, and everything is instead of going this way is going this way. However, we're going to go ahead and stick to the good old fashioned one and a half, one and a quarter, one and a half normal staggering, which there is a good chance that's what's sitting on your desk right now. Unless you're already in too deep, then it's too late for you. I'm sorry. A lot of what we recognize today as features of a normal keyboard stems from several solutions to problems in the development of the mechanical typewriter. The horizontal staggering we have here mainly developed to allow the arms move as intended without getting jammed up while typing. Mechanical typewriters also had an offset along what I'm going to go ahead and call the Z-axis, since vertical might get confused with the Y-axis perspective of vertical later in this video. The reason for this inconsistent staggering of the one half, one quarter, one and a half was to allow allow for typewriters to become shorter and the moves become shallower, which is generally considered easier on the wrist. Essentially, the horizontal staggering allowed for a simpler, more ergonomic, and more reliable system for typewriters. And when I say ergonomic, I don't mean good ergonomics, I just mean not unwieldy. Since this had become standardized over time, it's what people knew. And when the electric typewriters and computer keyboards came onto the scene, the horizontal staggering stuck around, even though that Z-axis offset has been greatly reduced, if not completely eliminated, depending on how you want to look at it. All in all, keyboards are much flatter now than they used to be. Now, putting all this in perspective of what our limitations are today, the need for this horizontal stagger is gone. It serves no ergonomic purpose, mechanical limitations are no longer a concern, and the only real reason is still just about everywhere is convention. After all, our hands don't really naturally fall in line with this offset of the keys. Sure, we can all type just fine on this, but that's from years of practice. And with that comes the other staggerings. All right, we're a little bit tighter here, a little more comfortable, a little less agoraphobic. I might need to see a shrink or, or a few dozen. Now, the next one we have up here is the ortholinear or matrix layout. And I'm going to be sticking with either ortholinear or ortho for short. That's the most commonly used name for this type of layout. Now, this one is pretty easy to explain. However, I'm not really going to be going into much of a history lesson on this one, though. It is simply in a grid. And it's more space efficient and requires a lot less funky keycap sizes. At least it should. That's something that's near and dear to my heart. This is the second most common layout I'm going to be talking about today, and it is what I use the most personally. Now, it is true that to a decent degree, this arrangement follows the natural movements of our hands better than the horizontal stagger we all grew up with. However, there really isn't much in the way of good research that proves that ortholinear keyboards actually reduce RSI or repetitive stress injuries due directly to the gridness of the layout. Mind you, when I say follows natural movements better compared to horizontal stagger, I don't mean good or well, just not as poorly. 
I would say any ergonomic benefit might be with the use of layers in a smaller keyboard like a Plank or a Prionic, which requires a lot less movement in general to reach modifiers and punctuation compared to standard full-size keyboards. You're doing less of those damaging motions, hence why they're popular on more compact keyboards. And you rarely see them on full-size non-split keyboards. Not that there are that many out there. The larger keyboards usually do as little as possible to rock the boat. There is no real advantage or disadvantage with going with an ortholinear keyboard from an ergonomic standpoint. However, it's kind of like metric versus imperial units or laying your city out like the Romans or romantically like the other cities in Europe that managed to be spared that practicality. Either way works fine, but one's just more logical. Now, I am biased towards ortholinear, but I'm not a blind fanboy. It's not necessarily going to help you with your wrist pains in and of itself without a more ergonomic configuration of the key map. But what is a more ergonomic layout? Well, that is where we start to look to the column stagger, or again, the columnare stagger. The column stagger maintains the x-axis order of an ortholinear keyboard, but offsets along the y-axis vertically to actually attempt to better fit our hands. If you flip your hands up with your palms facing you and curl your fingers a bit, you'll see that your fingers don't sit in a perfect line unless you force them. Yes, you might have the built-up muscle memory, but the idea of ergonomics is that it fits the natural shape of your body, not the positions we force it into. So given how the fingers are positioned, a column staggering tries to provide a better fit. The degree to which the keys are offset varies from design to design. You can have a very mild offset like what you'd see with a Gergo, yes I pronounced that wrong, to a much more aggressive staggering like a Kyria. I myself use corns or CRKBDs, just like this little guy right here. The corn is much more in line with the Ergodox. That's uh, another keyboard you might be able to Google and take a look at. And of course, there are more aggressive and less aggressive keyboards. These examples are used just because they are very common and it's not a one-off passion project somebody cobbled together, which you tend to see a lot with Ergo keyboards given the community that tends to use them, which isn't a bad thing uh, by any stretch of the imagination. The one you choose or design yourself is meant to fit you in a reasonable way, and if you can't find one that does, and you happen to tinker a bit, which is, you know, it's so rare in this, in this level of a hobby, uh, you make one. You'll also often see Ergo keyboards split and tinted as well to reduce forearm pronation and ulnar deviation. So by tinting the keyboard, the idea is we're not having to rotate our wrist as far, which should ideally put less strain on our wrist, which again, you... Doing that for a little bit is fine, but if you do that over and over again for a long period of time, that can cause a lot of stress. And the split part of it, where we can actually you know, separate the sides of the keyboard, allow us to have our arms resting in a much more natural position, not having to cant our, our hands in unnatural ways. So in addition to the column staggering, these features should further increase the ergonomic benefits of using these keyboards. Though I, I tend to use, leave them flat, which is probably a bad idea, but you know I'll pay for that when I'm, I'm older. Now you might be saying, but the column stagger is still very flat. That can be very ergonomic. And our fingers don't move along a flat plane when moving back and forth. Well, then the next step after that would be a dactyl, where we start to curve the plane the keys rest on. Now I'm using dactyl as a generic term for this kind of keyboard, though that probably isn't correct. My Google Foo is failing me at the moment <laughs> for a better one, and I don't want to just say ergo. That's also kind of covered with the column staggering. I'm sure someone's going to correct me in the comments. With this kind of keyboard, we are reintroducing that Z-axis I mentioned earlier, but in a much different way. Pictures are often worth a thousand words. I'll go ahead and pop one up right here. Now, you don't tend to see too many of these, probably because of cost and the small market that would be open enough to be interested in one of these. The Kinesis Advantage line would be an example of a production keyboard, but they are pretty expensive and have a fixed angle. And we mentioned earlier about the splitting helping improve the on our deviation issues. A good chunk of these you'll see out and about are custom jobs, normally 3D printed cases and hand wired. There are some flexible PCBs laying around, uh, but still usually hand wired. And I would consider using an Amoeba to be close enough to be considered hand wiring as well. I myself have a case on this way to put together and try out. That'll be fun. We'll have some videos on that when that happens. However, I don't have a lot of experience with these as of yet. Now, if the regular column staggering isn't enough, then one of these might be something to look into. It is its own beast, though, and some research would be a good idea before diving in. 
Well, there you have it, the three most common staggerings you'll tend to see on keyboards, plus that little cheeky bonus I snuck in there with the dactyls. Now, you might be wondering, well, which one should I use or which one should I try out? Well, of course, we've already tried this out, but I'll say it really depends on what you're trying to do with the keyboards, what your use case is, you know, what you're used to, what size keyboard you're looking at, because sometimes you can't get certain things in certain sizes. The only thing I'll kind of say in that regard is, if you have issues with strength in your wrist or hands, you have RSI, then something like a split column staggered layout might be the direction you want to start looking. And don't worry, they're not all this small. I just happen to be a user of 40% keyboards, but you can something like, like an Ergodox, a Lily 58, an Iris keyboard, that'll still have that column staggering, but will also have more keys that might suit you better, as well as might potentially have options for tinting as well. And you might also want to look into a dactyl or maniform keyboard where, again, like I mentioned, instead of having the keys flat, they're curved, which, again, tends to go a little bit more naturally with the hinging motion of our fingers. Well, that's going to go ahead and finish this up here. Uh, I was going to do a whole section on my actual personal feelings on this subject. I do have very strong opinions on this. However, it ends up being too long and ranty, and uh, we'll leave it for another time. But if you enjoy this, got something out of it, uh, Please like, comment, subscribe, do the little bell thing. Apparently that does something. And I really do hope you, you got something out of this. And I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day.